Thanks, Jason. So I think one of the things that can be tricky for people sometimes is deciding which device to use. So this is a talk that was originally put together by Tom Robinson sitting here a little while ago. Uh, about five years ago now. And so I went back and I was looking through the literature and I will tell you that there's no new studies that have been published since then. So we're looking at data that's a little bit old and um, there's a lot of opportunity if anyone in the audience here is interested in doing some research because I think some of the devices have changed a bit since then. So we're gonna look head to head at ultrasonic versus bipolar devices. And this is the list of papers. You can see there's, there's a bit of a gap. So going through the literature, it can be tough to compare and make a bigger group because there's no standard methodology. Technology changes rapidly, and you can have bias depending on who's paying for your study. So it's important to read that small print at the end to get a feel for um, who's helping uh, get the research accomplished. So in assessing these devices, we're gonna look at five different sections here. The burst pressure, thermal damage, heat, dissection, and cost. So burst pressure makes sense, right? When you seal a vessel, you don't want it to pop open from the arterial flow at the end of the cap there. And you wanna make sure that it's, uh, you're not gonna have post-sealing post bleeding. So you can set up a little pressure set gauge with a vessel with a catheter in it and your syringe can inject at certain pressures and you can measure it. So most of these studies had some kind of a circuit set up like that. In this paper by Noble, at the time of a colectomy, they dissected out about eight arteries from the mesentery and set up one of these pressure catheter um, units or, or um, circuits and then they would go through and seal with different devices and see how much it took to burst the vessel. When you look at an average size vessel, and so we're talking about below seven millimeters, you can see there's no difference between the two. In another study that was done in a porcine model, um, there was a little bit of a difference. The ultrasonic device uh, you can see that the vessel size was a little bit smaller and the burst pressure was higher for the first bipolar device in this study. So at small vessels, less than five millimeters, it's pretty much equal whether you use an ultrasonic or a bipolar sealer. The bigger vessels is the six to seven millimeter rating, and when people approach you to talk about using their energy devices, they will say, oh, this one is rated to seven millimeters. You can take a bigger vessel with it. So this is a, a big deal, and I think some of the ultrasonic companies have worked to modify the technology in the device so that they can achieve a higher seal, but I don't think anyone has gone back and tested the newer technology. So in this particular study, again, porcine vessels were sealed as an ex vivo explant, and larger vessels, five to seven millimeters, were used. Their burst failure gauge was greater than 300 millimeters of mercury. And as you can see, the bipolar device they used had no failures, whereas older ultrasonic devices, half of them failed, and newer ones did better, but there was still almost a, a, about a fifth of them had bleeding. So in the studies that we have, you have better sealing of the larger vessels with the bipolar device. Hopefully you've taken away the concept of thermal damage from today. As you discussed on the radio um, frequency sections, as tissue desiccates and coagulates, you get increased impedance and that heat can spread down along your vessel. You can have extra thermal injury if the heat is transmitted more by your instrument. So in looking, obviously if you're using a device right next to a critical structure like a ureter or a large blood vessel, thermal spread could lead to delayed injury and that could be a problem, whether it's bowel, ureter, any organ. In this particular test, they sealed average-sized vessels, 
and you can see that the ultrasonic devices had much thinner thermal spread than the bipolar sealing devices did. It's very significant at 0.001. And again, in an ex vivo human colon model on average vessels that were pretty small, about one millimeter or less, again, the ultrasound had thinner spread. Not quite as dramatic in this test, but still statistically significant. Steve Wexner, who you might bump into around this meeting somewhere, wrote a commentary on that. And he said that in assessing bipolar sealing devices, there was significantly more thermal damage to the sealed vessels with a bipolar than an ultrasonic device, and that that was consistent with multiple other studies. So it's something to keep an eye on and be careful about. So for our thermal damage category, the ultrasound appears to be superior with a thinner area of damage. Has everybody here touched a ultrasonic scalpel after engaging it? If you haven't, do it. <laughs> um, you know, I have watched more than one resident finish something and kind of have a wild swing and you see that blanch on the bowel and you go, oh because you know you're going to spend a couple minutes over sewing it to make sure you don't have a delayed leak. So you really have to be cautious about the residual heat of an instrument after it's activated. And in this particular test, they, did, uh, they tested which instruments became hot and how long it took them to cool off by doing four activations of five seconds each, alternating by a, a pulse of off time. And if you look at the chart, you can see that the change in temperature for the ultrasound was much higher. It got up to about 173 degrees Fahrenheit, and it took a little longer to cool off. So while both types of devices can get very hot and you need to be cautious about it, you definitely have to keep track of the tip of an ultrasound device. Whether you quench it in fat or water before you touch tissue with it again, you really have to watch. So the bipolar won that particular category. So in looking at how long it takes to achieve a seal, in this study, again, it was porcine vessels. And for the ultrasonic device, it took uh, significantly less time, about 3.3 seconds, to get a seal compared to the bipolar devices. And again, when you look at some of the byproducts of sealing, like smoke vapor, the ultrasound had significantly less, which I'm kind of surprised by because a lot of the time with the ultrasound, you get that plume. But in this you know, kind of more rigorous environment, they saw that the bipolar actually had more potential to obscure your view. One more thing to think about is when you're using the device, is it acting like a, a natural instrument? Is there a tip to it that will help you dissect? Is it hard to grasp tissue? And in a couple of commentaries, people found that the nose of an ultrasonic dissector was a lot more of an agile instrument, kind of similar to a clamp, like a hemostat, than the bipolar tissue sealers, which had more uh, enlarged kind of clunky tips and it was harder to dissect through tissue. And again, I know the companies have been actively working on this. I was shown a new small bipolar device for thyroid dissection by a uh, rep in the hallway the other day. So I think they absolutely recognized that that was a liability. But in our survey of the literature, at least, the ultrasound won for the ease of dissection. And finally, there's cost. So I think this is data from Colorado that Tom had obtained. And you can see that it's, it's pretty similar. Um, not too off, a little bit more expensive to use an ultrasonic device. So we'll call that equal. So in the head-to-head, -head, what it comes down to is that each modality has strengths and weaknesses. And you're the one doing the procedure. You know what's more important to you and which characteristics are more important to that particular procedure. So I would advise you to think about what you're more concerned about when selecting one of these advanced devices for hemostasis in your operations. All right.
Thank you.